Thomas and Jackie Hawks embark on a journey that would lead them straight into the clutches of doom. Little do they know that the decision to part with their most cherished possession, their opulent yacht, would hurl them into an abyss of darkness. Picture this. The sun glistening on the serene waters, a last voyage on their beloved vessel and a potential buyer about to seal the deal. As the sails caught the wind and the waves whispered secrets, the hawks ventured into oblivion, unaware that this very voyage would become their eternal shroud. The puzzle of their disappearance clawed at the hearts of loved ones and authorities alike and a chilling void of uncertainty engulfed their world. Where had they gone? And what unspeakable fate had befallen this once vibrant couple? This is the horrifying case of the beloved couple of Thomas Hawks and Jackie Hawks. Thomas Hawks and his brother Jim Hawks grew up in a farm in the heartland of California. They shared passions as they loved surfing the rolling waves and navigating the vast expanse of the open sea. Life's twists and turns saw Thomas answering the call of duty, trading the ocean's embrace and joining the military. He had even ventured into the harsh battlegrounds of the Vietnam War, leaving his mark as a veteran. His resilience didn't waver even as he transitioned into the realm of justice, becoming a dedicated probation officer. Meanwhile, Jim's path led him into the uniform of a police officer rising to the esteemed position of police chief. In their veins, the spirit of service ran deep. Thomas was also a bodybuilder. He had sculpted his body, a testament to his unwavering commitment to physical strength. It was evident in his impressive physique, a symbol of his indomitable will. Life wrote its chapters and Thomas married, bringing two sons, Ryan and Matthew, into the world. But like the changing tides, love's voyage took unexpected turns and they ended up divorcing. Thomas found himself in Prescott, Arizona, a new chapter in his life unfolding. His sons followed, drawn to the embrace of their father in this new land. Then in an unexpected but positive twist of fate, Thomas crossed paths with Jackie. Their hearts entwined sparking a love that blazed brighter than the Arizona sun. However, Jackie carried scars not of the heart but that of life's cruelty with a past accident leaving her unable to bear children of her own. Her love, however, knew no bounds as she embraced Thomas's sons as her own flesh and blood. Life's demands had always been met with unwavering determination by this couple. They toiled ceaselessly, dreams woven into their hearts. Their aspiration? To own a vessel, a testament to their hard-earned rewards. They bought themselves a 55-foot yacht and named it Well Deserved, a name in which their loved ones deemed as a fitting one and a well-deserved reward for their unyielding work ethic. They took the vessel to the next level by equipping it with the most advanced technology. With retirement's golden years ahead, Thomas and Jackie set sail along the picturesque west coast. Mexico's exotic shores, California's rugged coastline and Catalina Island's enchanting beauty became their playground for the following two years. They were without a doubt living the dream they'd so ardently envisioned. Life being an ever-evolving story, new chapters beckoned. One of Thomas's sons began a family of his own with the promise of a grandchild on the horizon. Anticipation filled their hearts, the prospect of becoming grandparents was a beacon of joy. Thomas and Jackie then considered the idea of returning to Arizona to be close to their expanding family. And so they made the hard decision to part with their beloved boat well-deserved and decided to sell it in Newport Beach, California. Little did they know that this decision would thrust them into the maw of fate leading to a tragedy they could never have anticipated. The dreams they'd so faithfully pursued would take an unexpected and heartrending turn. In November 2004, 
They listed the well-deserved for sale at $435,000 through an advertisement on a magazine choosing to sidestep the conventional broker route to save on hefty commissions. With the hefty price tag for their beloved yacht which was valued near half a million dollars, they were confident that the vessel's well-maintained condition would lure eager buyers but fate had other plans. The first responder to their ad was not what they had in mind. The enigmatic figure who reached out went by the name Skylar Dillian and what would unfold later on was beyond their wildest expectations. Initially, skepticism gnawed at them when they encountered Dillian. Thomas being a former probation officer couldn't help but question how someone so young could amass such wealth. Skylar's explanation? A past life as a child actor being a cast of the mighty Morphin Power Rangers and being featured in commercials had filled his pockets. Skylar Dillian had made an enticing proposition. A full cash offer sweetened by an extra $15,000 for some personal items he fancied and wanted to keep on the boat. To further ease the Hawks' concerns, he arrived at the meeting with his pregnant wife, Jennifer Henderson and their toddler in tow. Their seemingly wholesome family appearance worked its charm, gradually melting the Hawks' reservations, as trust began to take root. But this idyllic veneer concealed a dark truth, for Skylar and Jennifer were not who they appeared to be. Beneath the facade of friendliness lay a treacherous deceit that would lead to unthinkable consequences. The Hawks of course did not know this and by then their trust in Dillian had grown solid. The request for a sea trial, a routine part of boat sales was scheduled for November 15, 2004 marking what would become a fateful day. Just days before the trial, on November 12, 2004, the Hawks embarked on a poignant voyage to Santa Catalina Island off the Los Angeles coast. It was a dual celebration, both the imminent sale of their cherished vessel and a final sail on their beloved boat. Friends and family had been informed that a buyer had been found and the sail was on the horizon. As the morning sun bathed the scene, on November 15th, Skyler and his wife showed up with two men, a slender figure and a muscular one. The presence of the two was not what the Hawks had expected and suspicions took root but Dillian swiftly allayed their fears claiming the two were just acquaintances. The well-built man, he explained, was his accountant. With reassurances given, Jennifer and the child stayed behind as the rest boarded the boat and began the voyage. Slowly, they navigated into the vast expanse of open waters leaving behind the world they knew. It was a voyage that would prove to be their final, inexplicably marking the last time anyone would lay their eyes on them. As the day slipped into the shadows, Carter Ford, the port captain of the Lido Isle Yacht Club and a close friend of the Hawks eagerly anticipated their evening meeting. Plans had been made, excitement hung in the air. But as the darkness settled over Newport Harbor like a heavy shroud, an unsettling message shattered the tranquility. It was Jackie and her words sent chills down Ford's spine. They were out on a sea trial, a seemingly normal occurrence but something was amiss. The buyer and his cohorts had kept them out on the water longer than expected. Uncertainty clouded their situation. Promising to get in touch once they were back, those words were the Hawks' last communication with anyone. When the sun's rays painted the sky once more, the yacht had returned to its mooring in Newport Beach but the couple was conspicuously absent. It was as though they had evaporated, leaving behind a haunting mystery. The eerie silence grew more profound as hours turned into days. No calls were made to friends or family and their cell phones remained eerily silent, behaviors starkly at odds with their usual routines. Adding to the enigma, Jackie's SUV had vanished without a trace and so loved ones initially thought the couple had embarked on a spontaneous road trip to revel in their newfound financial fortune. 
Perhaps they'd simply shut off their phones as they drank to celebrate while living it up, they thought. But the grim truth unfurled like a sinister tapestry. The Hawks were not on vacation. Something far more sinister had swallowed them, and the chilling realization dawned on them later on. A week had come and gone, and the strange silence from the Hawks had ignited a relentless storm of questions and worries. Their absence weighed heavily on the hearts of those who cared for them, a nagging dread that something was amiss. Desperation led the family to Carter Ford as they asked him to cruise out to the well-deserved and dig around a little. As Ford stepped onto the vessel, a profound worry swept over him. This wasn't right. Something had gone terribly wrong. The once meticulously maintained vessel now lay in chaotic disarray. And right there, in a foreboding fashion, dangled a lone white towel from the portholes of the boat. Alarmed by this eerie scene, the family wasted no time in taking action. A missing persons report was swiftly filed, summoning detectives to the scene. With a sense of caution, they broke the lock on the cabin door and stepped inside. No traces of violence marred the boat's interior but something insidious loomed in the shadows. Their eyes fixated on a white towel soaked in fresh ink hidden between the master bed and a wall. It gave them a pause, raising disconcerting questions. Nearby, a receipt painted a chilling picture. Purchases of bleach cleaning supplies, heavy-duty trash bags, and tums which is a type of an antacid. The pieces of this macabre puzzle fell into place in the detectives' minds. The cleaning kit, eerily fitting for a murder, with bags meant to obliterate evidence, bleach to sanitize away the grimmest traces, and the tums perhaps to soothe a stomach unsettled by the gruesome deeds. The boat harbored secrets that sent shivers down the spines of all who ventured within. Determined to uncover the truth behind the buyers of the yacht, investigators launched a relentless pursuit of Skylar and Jennifer. A surveillance team was swiftly assembled, poised to shadow their every move. Undercover officers shadowed the Dillians, watching as they carried on with their daily lives seemingly untouched by the shadows of suspicion. They were regular volunteers at a local church and Jennifer's work as a hairdresser presented no unusual facets. To the world, they appeared utterly ordinary, masking their true nature with chilling adeptness. As detectives delved deeper into their backgrounds, a grim portrait emerged. Skylar Dillian's history bore the stain of a prior conviction for burglary, landing him on probation. Financial scrutiny revealed that the couple was drowning in a staggering $87,000 worth of debt, a dire financial abyss. A perplexing question now gnawed at the investigators. How had they managed to acquire the well-deserved given their dire financial straits? Skyler's claims of acting fame on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers unraveled upon investigation. He had been an uncredited extra in a mere episode or two. The couple's living situation added another layer of intrigue as they resided in the garage of Jennifer's parents' home. Their dreams of yacht ownership clashed starkly with their grim financial reality leaving detectives baffled by the incongruity of it all. The deeper they dug, the more perplexing the puzzle became. Dillian found himself under the hot spotlight of interrogation but he remained unflinchingly insistent that the yacht had been a legitimate purchase. Shockingly, he confessed to the source of the money which was drug sales. His tale took a darker twist as he revealed handing a briefcase filled with laundered cash from Mexico which were predominantly in $100 bills to Tom. Intriguingly, Skyler claimed that the Hawks had sought his help in opening a Mexican bank account, envisioning a life in a new home there. He added that Tom and Jackie had even signed a power of attorney, granting him full control over their financial affairs and the ability to move their money to Mexico. To further bolster his story, Skyler produced what appeared to be a legitimate power of attorney document, its signatures seemingly authentic. 
though Schuyler denied any involvement in their disappearance insisting the couple had likely moved to Mexico, a shred of credibility hung in the balance. Cell phone tower data indicated that the Hawks phones had pinged near the Mexican border the morning after the sea trial with Schuyler. Detectives frustrated and back at square one, returned to the drawing board. Their focus shifted to the Hawks family, determined to ensure the couple's safety above anything else. In a desperate bid for answers, they turned to the national news, putting a family member in front of the cameras pleading for information on the whereabouts of the missing couple and any information about their car. The mystery continued to deepen, leaving the world captivated by its twists and turns. The moment the police had been anxiously awaiting, materialized just south of the border. A call from an American citizen in Mexico jolted the investigation into action. He had been watching the news and at that very moment, he was gazing at the very car they had been tirelessly searching for. With bated breath, authorities converged on a house near Ensenada in Mexico and sure enough it was the Hawks car. Their hopes were riding high that it would turn out to be them despite the Hawks still missing for over a month and the dread of something sinister looming large. A flicker of optimism remained. Perhaps this was the breakthrough they had been yearning for. A Mexican federal agent took the lead, his knuckles rapping on the door. The names Skylar Dillian and Jennifer surfaced during the Spanish conversation. The man at the door shared a chilling connection. He was an old surfing buddy of Skyler. He nonchalantly mentioned that Skyler had handed him the car and shortly after this, Jennifer, his pregnant wife, had driven him back to the U.S. The detectives wasted no time. Swabbing the car's interior, they struck a chilling jackpot, Skyler's DNA on a heater knob an incriminating piece of evidence that raised dark questions. The puzzle pieces were falling into place and the investigators grew convinced that something sinister had transpired aboard the well-deserved. Skyler and Jennifer held the answers or at the very least they knew who did but the hunt for undeniable proof was far from over. The investigation took a curious turn as detectives revisited the perplexing power of attorney. The notion that Tom and Jackie would willingly grant strangers access to their bank accounts raised red flags casting a shadow of doubt over the documents. But then, a twist in the plot emerged. The notary Kathleen Harris provided a statement that seemed to corroborate Schuyler's account. She insisted that she had witnessed the Hawks signing the papers and had personally taken their fingerprints to validate the documents. Her version of events aligned with Schuyler's narrative but the astute investigators decided to probe further. They posed a seemingly innocuous question to Harris. They asked her to describe Tom and Jackie Hawks. While she could paint a perfect picture of Tom, her portrayal of Jackie raised suspicion. She described her as having brown curly hair, a stark contrast to the reality. Jackie had chopped her long curly locks, opting for a spiked blonde hairstyle when they moved on to the well-deserved. Was this mere confusion or did it hint at a more sinister cover-up? The fingerprints on the power of attorney were a perfect match and the signatures appeared legitimate, but a nagging sense of worry lingered. To dispel their doubts, the case was handed over to the FBI, enlisting the world's top handwriting experts. Their findings were startling. Tom's signature was authentic, as was Jackie's. However, an unsettling anomaly lurked within Jackie's signature leaving investigators grappling with a puzzle they couldn't quite crack. The Hawk's last name having an S at the end is a detail we've come to know well, haven't we? However, a chilling revelation emerged. In Jackie's signature, it was originally written as Hawk and someone had surreptitiously added the S later which was inconsistent with her handwriting. They believed that it hinted at a desperate signal to someone in the future that something was terribly amiss. The investigators, armed with this unsettling revelation, 
received a tip that Skyler was about to make his getaway. He had contacted his probation officer and asked for permission to leave the country, a desperate move that played right into the hands of the quick-thinking detectives. They swiftly apprehended him for the very crime he had earlier confessed to, money laundering. Detectives descended upon the converted garage apartment where Jennifer's parents lived. Amidst the belongings, they discovered a trove of Tom and Jackie's personal items including their camera and driver's licenses. A striking discovery awaited them within Jackie's driver's license photo. An uncanny resemblance to the notary's description further deepening suspicions about her involvement and the authenticity of her witnessing the documents. The shadows of conspiracy grew darker, casting a spotlight on the chilling possibility that more individuals were entangled in this perplexing disappearance than initially believed. The web of deceit was unraveling, revealing a complex tapestry of mysteries and secrets yet to be uncovered. In the garage, amidst the jumble of belongings, investigators stumbled upon a business card belonging to an LAPD detective, one who had served as a liaison with Interpol. A pivotal connection was made when they reached out to the Interpol agent disclosing their ongoing investigation into Skyler's potential role in the Hawks' disappearance. The Interpol agent however dropped a bombshell of his own. He revealed that he had crossed paths with Skyler a year prior during an inquiry into the murder of an American citizen in Mexico. It was an uncanny coincidence that couldn't be ignored. A grim theory began to take shape. If Skyler had been involved in that murder, could he have also been responsible for the Hawks' strange disappearance? The elusive challenge, however, still remained, finding concrete evidence. As the investigation progressed, detectives unearthed a peculiar anomaly on the yacht. Scrutinizing the ad the Hawks had placed to sell their boat, they observed a puzzling detail. In every single photo, the boat had two anchors. A hasty return to the harbor only deepened their suspicions. There, on the well-deserved, was only one anchor and not two as depicted in the ad. The pieces of this dark puzzle fell into place as a chilling theory began to emerge. Detectives started connecting the dots and piecing together a theory that linked the absence of the anchor on the yacht to the mysterious disappearance of the couple. It appeared that Skyler's claim of buying the boat might have been a sinister ruse, concealing a nefarious plot to murder the couple and steal their prized possession. All that remained was to bridge the gap between theory and undeniable proof. The net was closing in and Jennifer's actions spoke volumes. Her attempt to drain the Hawks' bank account served as damning evidence that she was complicit in the sinister plot, fully aware of what had unfolded during the sea trial even though she hadn't set foot on the boat. However, her lips remained tightly sealed, unwilling to betray her husband. The notary, too, held steadfast to her account. But in a pivotal moment, detectives spotted a name within the power of attorney documents, a name that would turn the tide in unraveling this mystifying case. It was the signature of a man who had borne witness to the fateful deal, a man by the name Alonzo Machain. Alonzo, merely 19 at the time, lived with his parents and worked as a jail guard. A friendship had formed between him and Dillian while the latter was incarcerated for burglary. Skyler had persuaded Alonzo to accompany him during the meetings, he was the slender man who had joined him on the sea trial. Promising leniency in his sentence, they struck a deal with Alonzo urging him to reveal his side of the story and unveil the chilling truth about the Hawk's fate. As the tape recorder began to roll, Alonzo embarked on a harrowing narration delving into the very depths of the horrors that the detectives had feared all along during their relentless investigation. He disclosed the presence of another man, the muscular figure Skyler had introduced as his accountant. This was however no ordinary individual. He was none other than John Fitzgerald Kennedy, an infamous gang member and ex-convict known ironically as John F. Kennedy. Together, 
they had concocted a sinister scheme that would spell doom for the Hawks. Their nefarious plan revolved around a cold-hearted kidnapping, intending to whisk the couple away to the open sea and cast them into its depths. The chilling narrative unfolded as John F. Kennedy feigned seasickness, retreating to the cabin below deck. Concerned for his well-being, Thomas ventured down to investigate unwittingly walking into the trap. Skyler followed closely behind, and in that moment they ambushed Thomas. Amidst the chaos, Jackie's voice pierced the air with frantic inquiries. Alonzo seized her, holding her in place and incapacitated her with a taser. She was then restrained with handcuffs and led to a different part of the boat. Both Thomas and Jackie found themselves helpless with their eyes and mouths taped shut. In those harrowing moments, as Jackie struggled to scream through her gag with tears of desperation flowing, Thomas offered a small gesture of solace. Handcuffed together, he tenderly stroked her hand with his fingers, a silent attempt to comfort her in the face of the grim fate that awaited them in the merciless hands of their captors. The grim saga continued as they were taken into the kitchen area where the power of attorney awaited their reluctant signatures. The chilling ultimatum hung in the air like a death knell, cooperate and perhaps they would be spared or resist and death would be their fate. The boat steered into the haunting depths of the ocean near Catalina Island, a place once filled with cherished memories for Tom and Jackie. On the deck of the vessel, they were bound together with a rope, a ghastly prelude to the impending horror. Dillian then disengaged one of the anchors from the boat's bow as he dragged the chain along with the dreadful sound echoing in their ears. They had heard that sound countless times before but this time it signaled their inexorable doom. In the face of impending tragedy, Jackie's pleas for her life were heartbreaking her cries echoing her yearning to see her grandchild and her belief that she was too young to die. Amid the terror, Tom calmly stroked her hand and assured her it was all right and that they were going to be together. The cruel reality loomed before them, they were about to be cast overboard into the merciless embrace of the Pacific Ocean. And just like that, they were pushed from their beloved vessel, dragged down by the weight of the anchor, vanishing into the depths below. Tragically, their bodies would never be recovered, leaving a shroud of mystery to cloak their horrifying fate. With their sinister deed done, Skylar embarked on a heartless mission to erase any trace of the Hawks' existence. He gathered their cherished personal items including photographs and callously tossed them into the unforgiving ocean depths with their memories sinking into oblivion discarded without a shred of remorse. Having obliterated all remnants of the couple, Dillian and John F. Kennedy assumed an eerie semblance of normalcy. As they cruised back to Newport Harbor, they casually kicked back, casting their lines into the water and started fishing as if the horrifying events that had just transpired were nothing more than a disturbing figment of their imagination. Justice finally caught up with the malevolent trio. Skylar Dillian, John F. Kennedy and Alonzo Machain faced the grim weight of two counts of first-degree murder, the sinister consequences of their heinous actions. Amid the unfolding drama, Jennifer Henderson clung to a fragile hope staunchly defending her husband's innocence, citing that their daughter was missing him. Little did she know that her own reckoning was swiftly approaching as she too was ensnared in the web of guilt. Jennifer Henderson found herself facing two counts of murder, her involvement in the gruesome act from the shore laying bare her complicity. The motive behind these chilling murders was stark and straightforward, the insatiable hunger for money. Adding another layer to this sinister tale was Myron Gardner, a man with his own dark past. An ex-convict and a gang member as well, he had crossed paths with Dillian after the latter's prison release. While Gardner declined to actively participate in the crime, he played a crucial role in connecting Dillian with John F. Kennedy. For his involvement in this macabre chain of events, 
he faced charges of involuntary manslaughter. Justice prevailed as separate juries delivered the same verdict, they were all guilty. In October 2007, Jennifer Henderson received her sentence, two life terms without the possibility of parole, forever bound by the weight of her actions. On May 1, 2009, John Fitzgerald Kennedy faced the ultimate punishment, a death sentence that landed him on death row at the forbidding San Quentin State Prison. Alonzo Machain, after testifying against the others and pleading guilty to his charges, received a lenient sentence on June 15, 2009. 20 years and 4 months behind bars, with the possibility of parole in September 2021. March 2009 marked a turning point for Myron Gardner who had spent four years behind bars. He chose to plead guilty to accessory after the fact, resulting in the dismissal of the murder charges against him. During his time in jail, Skylar Dillian faced additional charges. He was accused of soliciting a fellow inmate to carry out a sinister plot against his own cousin and father. But the darkness ran deeper as Dillian found himself implicated in another murder case, the murder case of the American citizen named John Jarvie whose life had been taken in Mexico back in 2003. His cousin who was linked as an accessory to the Jarvie murder and his father were both deemed critical witnesses in both murder cases. September 22, 2008, marked the commencement of jury selection in the monumental trial against Skylar Dillian. The courtroom witnessed a consolidated case where Dillian was jointly tried for the murders of Thomas and Jackie Hawks alongside the chilling murder of John Jarvie. Justice delivered its verdict on April 10, 2009 as Dillian was sentenced to the ultimate punishment, a death sentence. Orange County Superior Court Judge Frank Fossil sealed his fate, casting him as well into the unforgiving confines of San Quentin State Prison's death row. Before Skylar Dillian was sentenced to prison, a disturbing revelation came to light. While in jail on March 13, 2008, he carried out a shocking act, partially cutting his own male private organ with a razor blade driven by a desire to rid himself of it. After receiving urgent medical care, he was returned to his cell the following day. In an interview, Dillian confessed that his motive behind this gruesome self-harm was a profound desire to transition into a woman. He had already changed his name from John Julius Jacobson to Skylar Dillian, selecting a unisex name as a reflection of his identity. Defense lawyers argued that Dillian's desperate need for funds to finance sex reassignment surgery had been the dark motivation lurking behind the murders of the Hawks. However, it's crucial to note that such a motive cannot excuse the heinous crimes he committed. In 2019, however, Dillian's gender was legally changed to a female and the world now knows her as Skylar Preciosa Dillian. The Hawks family cherishes the enduring memory of Thomas and Jackie, forever etched in their hearts. These vibrant souls known for their adventurous spirit were embodiments of goodness and authenticity. Their fate was a cruel twist of destiny they didn't deserve. Though they are gone, their spirits endure, casting a timeless glow upon our memories. May they find eternal peace in paradise. If you found this video compelling, drop a like and share your thoughts in the comments and support us by subscribing to the channel.